All right, welcome back to 3 Plus U. We are having so much fun today. Did you know that this is Mental Health Awareness Week? Dr. Tim Jennings has been on our show plenty of times before, always with helpful tips for you and your family. And this morning he's back talking specifically about mental health. Good to see you. Glad, glad to be here. Okay, this is a serious topic. And a lot of times people can kind of make light of this topic, but they shouldn't. Because for those who are affected, this is quite serious. Yeah, and, and people don't realize that 46% of Americans at some time in their life Life will have a mental illness. That's almost half the population. And in any 12 month period, 26% of Americans are struggling with a mental health problem. It's one in four. So if you look around the people you're working with, go to church, look around, one mm -hmm. out of every four this year is struggling with a mental health problem. Now, do you consider like clinical depression, is that considered a mental health issue? Or? Yes. Okay. Yes. The most common ones are phobias and anxiety disorders and panic and things like this. Okay, so when you look at the economy, for example, um, does that tend to drive people into panic attacks or, or a depressed behavior? Different things in a person's life can affect their mental health? Uh, that's a great question. And, and, and the actual answer, of course, is, true, is, is yes. The more stress we're under, the more we fire the brain's stress circuitry, which causes that, that adrenaline rush, that anxiety feeling, that tension, which increases inflammation. If it stays chronically in that state, it actually causes changes in the body and brain that lead to depression and other problems. Are people still embarrassed to admit that they're having a problem? You, you know, there is a stigma still that, that is associated with mental health problems, and this is one of the things we want to disabuse people of. Mental illnesses are brain illnesses, and the most important organ of your body is your right. brain. Right. Exactly right. And so, um, people who have mental illnesses are not choosing to have this problem. They're having this problem because the, the brain is so complex that it can be affected by so so many things in our environment and in our life experience that can alter it. And this is why oftentimes people do need to get professional help in order to help, um, you know, fix or resolve whatever's going on with them. You wouldn't try to fix your own broken leg. Right. Why are you going to fix a broken brain? Well, and that's right. And I guess the stigma does play into that or people tend to think, well, I can just diagnose myself. And the fact is, if, you're, if your brain is ill, you're not healthy to be helping yourself. I mean, yeah. you're, you're fighting against the cure. Well, and the other thing is the brain is very sensitive to so many other things going on in your body. This is why if you're really struggling, go get a, go to your professional doctor, get a good physical examination. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we have mental health symptoms that are related to a physical problem that's not diagnosed, but it manifests itself first as, say, depression, lethargy, concentration problems, irritability, these types of things. For instance, a common one would be a sleep disorder. Mm -hmm. Somebody with a sleep disorder will manifest with irritable mood, um, lack of patience, uh, concentration problems. It could look like a mental health problem, but it's really a sleep problem. So it's good to go to your primary care doctor, start there, get a good physical examination, and then go from there. Often when you're here, we focus on kids. Uh, are you seeing an increase with children and mental health issues? Well, I'm glad you brought up kids because one of the studies, a couple studies came out recently with kids. And one uh, actually was a 25 year study, and it found that kids who are raised in homes where there's a lot of conflict, and we're not talking physical violence or sexual abuse. We're talking where the parents argue and holler and they're, they're it conflicts you a lot. That those kids actually have higher rates of mental health problems, drug and alcohol problems, and do worse in school and career than kids who grew up in homes that are, ha are at peace, even if those homes are divorced homes where there's no conflict. So a divorce is less harmful on a child's development than staying in a home where there's constant fighting between the parents. But do parents always know that they're even doing that? If, if your day-to-day -day life is a... Uh, uh, arguing one that's all you know. So yeah. how do parents address that? Well, you know, that's a good question. I think most parents, uh, if they just ask the question, do we have more peace in our home or, is, or do we have more tension and conflict in our home? We're not talking the occasional disagreement or that happens right. in every relationship. We're talking the day in, day out, tenor mm -hmm. and tone of the home is one of conflict and argument. That is unhealthy to the child. The child grows up in an environment where they can't feel safe, where they're always on edge, where they're tense all the time. And this actually alters how the brain develops, puts them at more risk for mental health problems and drug and alcohol problems. Okay, let's talk cost for a minute because that was something you were going to touch on when you look at undiagnosed mental problems. Does that cost us more in the end than getting treatment? Yeah, actually it does. Studies have shown that children who were raised in homes where mothers have depression uh, and are not treated versus homes where mothers have depression and get treatment, those in homes where the mothers don't get treatment, those children have higher rates of mental health problems, alcohol, drug problems, do worse in school. Where the mo mothers get treatment for it, those kids don't have any uh, any difference than in homes where the mothers didn't have depression. I told, I was talking to somebody recently and I had read a survey and it's, the kids were asked these questions of if you could change one thing in your life, what would it be? Or one thing about your parents, what would it be? And the pollsters expected to get, you know, I want more money, a better vacation.
education, better video games. What they heard was, I wish that my parents didn't have to be in a hurry all the time. Yes, Does it's that important. then cause the depression as parents that we're, we're kind of working against ourselves in a way? You know, this is one of the factors, overwork, exhaustion, sleep deprivation, uh, feeling uh, pulled in several different directions at once, you can't keep up. This leads, in fact, does increase risk for depression, sure. Okay, it's an important topic. It's just the one week that we're focusing on it, and yet, once this week is over, the problems continue on week after week after week. So if you're looking to get help, he's on the show a lot, but his office is right there at One Park Place, the phone number 531 4110-TMSChattanooga.com, and that stands for, real quickly... Transcranial Magnetic Stimulation, TMSChattanooga.com. we got a lot of information on our website. Yeah, there's a lot there, but basically, if you want a brain expert, he's your guy, Dr. Tim Jennings. Thanks Thank you having. so much. Thank nice you. to see you this morning. We are back with Allison Lovovitz next on 3 Plus U. Oh, and... Camera reigns from...